Welcome to the Gregory's Physics class video number two. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Gregory Excel Lessons 1 to 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, in our last video, we saw how to do an XY scatter. And if you click on this sheet, uh, XY scatter 2, this is what we did in our last video. We saw how to set up the data and then plot an XY scatter. So when we had actual raw data from an experiment, we wanted to plot and see the individual points to see if we could notice a pattern. In this video, and I'm going to click on the Formulas 2 sheet, this is the answer. In each, if this workbook, you'll have your practice sheet where you can practice creating the formula and then the answer. But in this video, we want to see how to create a formula to calculate the theoretical range given some x input angles, a theoretical line, and then see that we use not the scatter points but the smooth line. It's still an xy scatter, which plots the relationship between two numbers, not a line. So if you go up to Insert, it's not this, it's this. Uh, and we'll see how to create the formula. So we're going to start on this sheet right here, Formula. Now the first thing is we have, actually, I'm going to delete these, pretend you didn't see that. Over here on sheet formula 2, notice our x input has the same increment. We're always adding 2.5. If that's the case, there is a nice, easy way to uh, create that data set in Excel. You simply establish a pattern. I'm going to control and roll my wheel to zoom in. The pattern here, I typed in one number and another. The pattern is I'm adding 2.5. Now this is the selection cursor. So when you select something, notice that the selection cursor as I point towards the lower right hand corner, oh, it turns to a little crosshair. That crosshair means you can click and drag. Now notice what's happening. You can see the little screen tip there, 65, 67.5. It's incrementing, so it'll give us a whole data set there. Now we want to create a formula based on this x input, our degrees, and calculate theoretical range. Here's our formula, sine 2 theta. Now there's a sine function in Excel which makes this calculation nice. And we want to create a formula. Anytime you create a formula in Excel, you have to type an equal sign first. And then we're going to type SIN. Now in 2007 and 10, it's great. It gives you a list of functions right here. And it will give you a little description. Returns the sine of an angle. Well, that's what we want. So I'm going to hit Tab. Now notice the screen tip here. The screen tips are very helpful, but it says number, right? You're not sure if that's radian or degrees. So I'm actually going to do a little trick here. I'm going to click on this. I've typed sine equal sign, open parentheses. I'm going to click on this f of x button up in the formula bar. And it will tell you there's number, and it gives you a description. Is the angle in radians for which you want the sign? Now, it reminds you how to create radians here from degrees. But luckily, there's a radians function. I'm going to click Cancel, equals SIN. So here's our input. Our x in input is always going to be degrees, and we need for our Excel function, radians, and whatever it is, degrees or radians, we need to multiply by 2. So our input is degrees, so I'm going to type another function, radians. Notice it pops up here. It says converts degrees to radians. Hey, that's exactly what we want. Now last time I hit tab, which you can do, or you can double click. Any item on that list, you can double click. And there it is. So now I click on my uh, degrees, and I'm going to multiply asterisks, and it's a 2, so I'm just going to type that 2 in. Now, the cool thing about Excel is that A4 is looking at the cell A4, and it's got the input 0. So it'll calculate what the uh, result should be in range given 0 degrees. But when we copy this formula down, that A4, that actually is going to be a blue box that will move as we copy the formulas. It's actually called a relative cell reference. It means relative to me, the formula, where am I always going to look? one cell to my left, right? So the blue box as we copy the formula down will move, which is exactly what we want. Now, I'm in the middle of the radians function. I have to close this off, so I'm going to close parentheses. Now notice what happened to the screen tip. I'm going to backspace just to show you. When you're creating larger formulas with multiple functions, the screen tips are very helpful. So when I close parentheses, the screen tip is reminding me, oh yeah, you still have another parentheses to put for the sign. I'm going to enter that, and the screen tip goes away. And now I'm going to uh, enter that formula into the cell. Now, 
that works just fine. We're going to use our same trick here. I'm going to take my selection cursor and point by point. When I see that cross hair or angry rabbit, I'm going to click and drag. Now I'm just going to drag it down a few. And I'm going to click right here and hit the F2 key or put it in edit mode. Notice that up here it was A4, but here it says A7. So the formula is not really looking at a particular cell reference. It's looking at a relative position always one to my left. And boy, that's awesome. Think about how hard it would, would be to create this column of theoretical ranges if Excel wasn't built that way. Now here's still a further trick. Notice we can click and drag, right? And that A7 turns to A8, which is really relative position one to my left. But watch this. We want to first I want to highlight all these and delete these just so I can show you this cool trick in full force. Now we put this formula in the cell, boom. Now, move your selection cursor, and when you get close and you see that little crosshair, instead of clicking and dragging like we did before over here, double click it all the way down. As long as there's something to the left, it keeps going, it keeps going, it sees that first blank and stops. And if you put this last cell in edit mode, you can see, sure enough, it worked just fine. So now we've created our X and Y. The X always comes first, and then the Y, if you set your data up that way, the chart will interpret it correctly. We want to have, just in our light, like in our last video, blanks all the way around, our variable or field names at the top, column headers, and then our data below. Now click in one cell and we'll use our same keyboard shortcut we did before to highlight the whole data set. Control asterisk on the number pad or control shift 8 if you don't have a number pad. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it this way, too. It's just that's really fast. Insert, no line, because we we're plotting two numbers, the relationship between two numbers. Last video, we did this. That's what you use when you have data points from an experiment. But here, we have theoretical lines. So we're going to use not the, if I can get that screen tip, not scatters with only markers, but scatter with smooth lines. Oh, look at that beautiful smooth line right there. Now we can point to this edge right here. And when we see that diagonal line, we can click and drag in just a little bit to make it smaller. We can click on this and let's delete it using the delete key. That's chart junk. We have a title here. We don't want that title. We want the title from the cell E1. So just as we did in last video, click here, make sure it's not a dotted line, but click on outside edge as long as it's solid. Then come up to the edge, um, the formula bar, click, type an equal sign, and then click in E1. Uh, Notice the formula, that's the sheet name, and then the cell reference E1. Hit enter. And now you can see that. Let's format this, change the font size. I'm going to right click the outside edge. And here's my mini toolbar. I'm going to click there and type, say, a 10. Enter. Ah, oh, that's looking good. Now we need to add, just as we have a chart title, we need a label here and here to let people know what the uh, label is for the X and Y and the unit. So I'm going to go up to Chart Tools, Layout. There's our chart title. Here we want axis. Let's do the horizontal first, title below axis. Same thing. Now the solid line, we can click up here and type an equal sign, but F2 will shoot your cursor up there and then type an equal sign. And I want this X label here. Notice formula, dollar sign, enter. And you can see that there. Same thing for the vertical. F2 to shoot my cursor up there, or just click up there, equal sign, and then click on this. When I hit Enter, it registers that right there. Now the next thing we want to do is change the max for this axis. You can right click Format Axis, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control 1. I'm going to say Maximum. I want to define my own value, so I'm just going to put a 1. Enter. Oh, very good there. You can see that the max range out, because this is the theoretical range given some degree input. So it looks like, wow, I don't know what it is. Some angle here. Let's go look at our data set. Oh, look, there it is, 45 degrees, 1 meter. It'd be nice to, we changed this over here, we changed the max, but let's click here 
and change the increment. Control 1 or right click for. There's our min, max. Here's our major unit. Let's change that. And notice we have increments of 20. And I know I want 45. 45 divided by 3 is 15, so I'm going to try 15. Make it increments of 15, just because I know that'll make 45 show up on the chart. I'm going to click close. So there we have uh, something measuring up right with the top. Now, a couple other things here. We added uh, titles and axes labels here. We can also add other types of labels called text boxes. I'd like to have a little text box here that points right to that point and says, hey, uh, max range equals one meter at 45 degrees. S we'll do that in just a moment. But another thing, these lines, if you click on the outside edge, it highlights the whole inside. But if you click on a line right inside, it'll highlight just these lines. These are great if you're have a chart and you want to eye it, which means you want to actually kind of measure over and see where it is. We don't, we don't want to really do that here. We just can see the uh, trajectory and the pattern. So I'm going to delete these. That's kind of like chart junk. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Now let's add a little text box here. I'm going to go out to Layout and Labels and the text box is over here in Insert. So I'm going to click on Text Box. When it, you click on text box, it's orange. And then you can come down here, and with that little cursor, you click and drag and draw a box. And then I'm going to type max range equals 1 meter at 45 degrees. Now I want to change the font. I'm going to click on the outside edge, right click, and there's our little mini toolbar. I'm going to type 8 and enter. I'm going to try and change the width of this. Get the at to pop down. Oh no, I want to go back a little bit. So yeah, I want max range equals 1 meter at 45 degrees. We could actually uh, center this right here. We could actually use on the home ribbon alignment that. So I just centered it. Maybe move this up a little bit. Maybe move it down just a little bit, something like that. Now, if I click over here, see how there's no border? In fact, I think I'll move it over just a little bit, more like that. We can format this, either right click Format or Control 1. Remember, all, ele all the elements can be formatted with Control 1. Line color, I'm going to say Solid. I'm going to keep that default color. It's the same as this. By the way, you can change the, if you don't like the color on this line, uh, go to Format and change the line color. How about we go back on the Layout text box. I want a shape. I want to have an, an arrow that points right up to there. So I'm going to go to Shapes. And just like the text box, when I click on the arrow, it's, highlight, it's waiting for me to draw it, and I can point to the middle parts and when I see that red, it'll actually connect it when I get the red and click and drag. Maybe point right there. Maybe I could click on this box. and Notice now I clicked and now I got it. And now I want to click and drag this over just a little bit. And then click on the line and when I see that I'm going to click and drag, try and point right to the center. Okay, that's good enough right there. All right, so now we have our chart. I'm going to control and roll to zoom out a little bit try and point to the edge of this chart. And when I see my move cursor, which is hard to get sometimes, there it is. I'm going to click and drag. All right. So in this video, we saw how to create a formula based on some x inputs. We saw how to plot. And because it's a theoretical line, we use the smooth xy scatter line. We did some more labeling and even added a cool little text box. Now in our next video, we'll see how to do a trend line, which is different than this. And in our final video, number four, we'll see how to do a smooth line and the scatter points together to show the th theoretical line and the actual data points. All right, see you next video.